So what's up everybody? It's your boy Dwell once again. And uh, you know, I'm, today I'm gonna do another video because I saw that uh, a lot of, uh, I got a lot of views in my carpenter video. And that's the most views I have in all the videos that I put up since I started doing this. So today what I decided to do was uh, I'm gonna do another video and this is regarding carpenter power tools. So this right here is carpenter power tools 101. You know, there's a lot of carpenter trades out there like concrete uh, finish etc etc I do framing I saw a couple videos on YouTube and uh, it really doesn't show much tools in the couple videos that I saw a lot of carpenters uh, you uh, put uh, battery powered tools and I work in a commercial do big buildings schools shopping centers all wood and we don't really use a uh, battery powered tools they're good to have it's a good investment but when you're doing a lot of cutting, a lot of nailing, we use heavy duty stuff. And this is what I'm gonna start by. I'm gonna start by uh, showing you the videos, some of the tools, obviously I didn't bring them all down, but I have a couple of them, the most basic tools that you might see on a job site. And uh, a lot of you might know and might not know about this. So this is to all my carpenters that don't know, all those at home people that wanna know what kind of tools you use when you do a rough framing job. In a rough framing job, usually you need hoses. These are 3 8 100 foot long hoses. I got two of them. You know, it's always good to have extra ones. But usually in the job site, you carry two of them. You know, 3 8 fitting. 100 foot, you know. It depends what you could use it for. Sometimes you use it for, uh, all you need is one, but sometimes you do need two. Sometimes you even need three, but sometimes usually someone hooks up a main hose and then from there, you know, to where you want it to and then that helps out a lot. So I got two of these, you know, you can get them at Home Depot. These are pretty cheap. They're about 30, 40 bucks. Usually uh, another thing you need to start off is uh, I got two power cords, 100 footers. I mean, these are pretty beat up already, but usually the same deal. Sometimes you only need one, but two, you gotta have two. Sometimes throughout the day you only use one and uh, you gotta have two. Sometimes someone throws a lead, it could be your lead, it could be somebody else's lead, company's lead, and then you hook up from there. Where you're at, it could be up in the roof and you hook up from there and, uh, and then you hook up yours. So sometimes you only need one. Some people carry 50 footers. Usually we carry these uh, 125 volt, 20 amp cords those big jobs got a bunch of etc tools maybe I'll talk to you right now about them you know usually on the job site you got to carry we do tend to use a uh, power cords these are the most basic power battery power tools we use a drill and an impact they come in handy you can use them for so many things as a rough framer you know mine are pretty beat up but they made me money I use uh, Milwaukee these are usually the cheapest brand I had to buy a they come with these small, small batteries. Add them best and buy on these uh, M18 rated lithium. They last longer, they're bigger. I bought two of them. But yeah, they're a good investment to have. You can, uh, yeah, so as a rough framer, you can use those. You gotta have a whole hog. I got this one, it's pretty beat up already. But you, you, you do drill holes, you know? For the anchors, for uh, for counter sinks, this is a heavy duty one, very dangerous. You gotta be careful when you use this. Always think safety first. It could break your hand. It's a whole hog. It's pretty beat up already. It's a half inch, half inch whole hog. It's a pretty good tool. You can buy them used. You know they're expensive, but you gotta take care of them. Sometimes companies supply. Sometimes they don't. But a brand new one at Home Depot can go from anywhere from around 300 bucks more or less. Could be higher, could be lower. Use uh, this rare, but you do use one. It's a uh, rotor hammer. I got a Makita one. Like I said, pretty beat up. I've had my tools pretty for a while now, but they made my money. You know, you use this usually to drill through concrete when you want to put some hold downs, when you want to um, put some anchors on the floor, some shots. You know, some temporary 
poles and you put your nails in there when you're holding up a wall or something. This tends to work. You drill so for some tight ends when you're putting up a wall. You know, when to hold it down, you drill through the concrete. Sometimes you don't shoot pins. So yeah, we do tend to use this different size roller hammer bits. That's a basic one, good to have. When you're doing those framing jobs, you know, you gotta have one of those. I bought this Sawzall, it comes in handy. I keep it in my truck. It's uh, it's called the Hacksaw. It's by Milwaukee too. It's a battery powered Sawzall. It comes in handy, like I said. If you have it, you use it, but usually you use uh, power tools with corded, because uh, sometimes the battery dies. But it's always, it's a good investment too. I actually got the hookup on this. I didn't buy it, but I got the hookup on it and they gave it to me. Same deal, battery pack. Just hooked it on. Oh, battery's dead. And another one. And it's a saw, it's a sawzall, you know. Oh. Good tool to have, good investment. Like I said, I got a bunch of random tools that you use for the carpentry job. So maybe I can do that in another video. Here's a saw, here's a tool everybody knows as a carpenter you need. I got my skill saw. This is one of the main tools you use in a carpentry job. I know a lot of carpenters use this, but in framing for sure, in rough framing, this is a main tool. This is the main tool you gotta have for your cuts. You know, a lot of people are bringing in uh, power, like I said, battery power ones. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with them, but this doesn't stop, you know what I mean? This doesn't stop. Safety first, it's a skill saw. You can get them for like 300 bucks new. Even at the Swamis, they sell them now, but that's on you if you want to take that risk. But this is a, a skill saw, seven and a quarter and a half, is it? Um, yeah, what is Seven and a quarter, sorry. Seven and a quarter, and uh, like I said, it's a good tool, a dangerous tool. Get kicked back, always think safety first. If you know how to use one, don't use it. Make sure there's someone that knows how to use it around. Don't just try to be smart and or cool and start cutting, you know? I got this DeWalt Sawzall right here, powered. So, you know, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, doesn't drain. Like I said, a Sawzall, if you have the battery one, if you have a battery set, it's cool. More power to you. I would like to have a bunch of battery power stuff for emergencies when you do those little jobs or you're far and there's no power. But usually at the big job sites, there's power. So just hook up your cord to this, your saws on, you don't stop, you know? It's, it's just easier, you know? You don't worry about the power, your battery dying. And uh, I mean, if you got the battery there, it's cool. It just doesn't have the torque, like like a battery, like a corded saw, like the wall receptacle saw. This is called a circular saw, actually. I call this, everybody's used to calling them skill saws, but this is a receptacle saw. Uh, what is it? I think it's called a circular saw or something like that, whatever. And this is a receptacle saw right here. Another tool, nail gun. I got a Hitachi nail gun. It's the most popular, it's the main ones you see out there in the field. This is a new one actually. I just got it a couple months ago. I liked it. I mean, I needed one already. The other one was already messing up. I have an extra one. But well, this is your, uh, shoots uh, three and a quarters. I don't think it shoots three and a half. Yeah, three and a quarters. The three and a halfs are, uh, there's another gun for it that shoots three and a half. But it shoots uh, three and a half nails. The three and, three and a half nails actually doesn't shoot those. It shoots uh, three and a quarter. The three and a half, it doesn't really shoot them out. It's too, the, the, the clip ain't really hold, holds them in that good. But Hitachi nail gun, you know, one of the main tools you see out there in the field, some top stuff right here. They have different guns. I mean, everybody has their opinions, their likes. This is what I have. I got a pass load. It's called a hardware gun, a positive placement gun. There's different names to it. This shoots up to two and a half, but it's for hardware. Like A35s, LTP4s. Some people call them Tico's. A lot of people have Southern Nomad. So this is basically an apprenticeship, apprentice tool, not really, but usually apprentices have these tools right here. An apprentice has to have a, 
sawzall, skill saw right here, some cords, some hoses, you know, when you're starting off. And one of these for sure when you're starting off. It's good because uh, that's what they put you to do, put hardware on. This is a pass load that goes 400 bucks more or less, depends where you go, 350. Same for the Hitachi, depending where you get it at, what store, 350, 400, 250, depends where you, where you get it at. Good tools to have, good investment right here. I like this one. I, I, I honestly prefer this one than the Hitachi positive placement gun. It has this little nozzle right here where you aim and it shoots right where you want it at on the holes of the hardware. Beautiful. And this Hitachi right here has a, you know, just for shooting plywood or something, you could uh, adjust the depth of how in you want the nail. You want the, the head more out, the head more in. It's like for shooting plywood, you know, you could adjust it, adjust the air. Uh, another tool that's good to have, that I have, I carry it in my truck. It's a heavy duty uh, drill, you know, it's, it does other stuff. You could use it for drilling holes, you know. Kind of same as a as a whole hog. It's just the whole hog's more powerful. Depends what you want to drill. This is a good tool. It's not that heavy. It's not as heavy as the whole hog. But like I said, some type of holes you can't drill, and the whole hog could drill them. So the whole hog could do everything basically. It changes the uh, pace. You could, the torque is slower or faster. But remember, this is a dangerous tool. Safety first. If you have gloves, wear them. If you have uh, safety glasses wear them, earplugs wear them, you know, that's just, I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And this drill is good to have, it helped me out a lot, you know, when I need it, I use it, it's there. Another tool we tend to use a lot in the framing, when we're tying nuts, you know, all those anchors, hold downs, uh, nailers, an impact, heavy duty impact again. Mine's pretty beat up, this ain't good to have, I gotta fix it. Cords are messed up, but good power. They have battery powered ones, which are cool. I haven't tried those yet. One of my coworkers has one. I like it, it's just heavy, but I saw that they made a newer one. It's actually heavier than this one, but they made a newer one that's smaller and it feels lighter. It just costs a grip. If you buy this one new, you can get it depending where, even in the Swamis, you get it for 80 bucks, 90 bucks new, but that's on you. It, and at the stores, maybe 200 bucks. I don't know the exact price for these. They have different brands. I have a Milwaukee. Uh, I tend to buy Milwaukee for, for the most part because the majority of my tools are Milwaukee. They're good tools. They don't let me down. I got uh, another tool you, you use right here. It's a grinder. This is one of the other tools you tend to carry and see a lot in the field. Depends where you're cutting. Sometimes you got to cut off nails. Uh, when you're stalling hold downs, you got to chop them off. Anchors, chop them off. The, all threads, chop them off. It's for many things, you know. Uh, sometimes you gotta help the concrete guys or they messed up something and you gotta cut it. So a grinder, one of the main tools too that you use, it's good to have. You never know when you're gonna need it. And also I carry, I got a couple more tools right here, but like I said, I ain't gonna go too depth in that. That's extras. I'm just going over the power tools I have on me right now. I have some more in the truck. Uh, but these are the main tools you use. I, I, I have a little uh, sludge right here, sludge hammer. But a sludge hammer is a tool you tend to carry, you know, in your bags. Not in your bags, but uh, somewhere close, in your toolbox, in your job box, in your truck. For when you need it, you got to smash something. You got to hit, hit something and put it in place. Something heavy that a hammer doesn't do, this does the job. So, yeah, at a carpentry job, you know, this is 10... This is what you tend to see, you know. I carry two cords. A lot of my coworkers carry two cords. Like I said, 125, 20 amp, 125 volts, 100 feet each. I got two uh, 3 8 hoses, 100 feet each. Like I said, you usually never know where you're going to be at at a job site. Sometimes you even need one more, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you only use one, depending where you're at. The main tools, like I said, you use on a daily for sure your skill saw your skill saw you know like safety first think about that usually the the saw saw you just use it when something uh, is not where it's supposed to be and you got to cut it down and you know chop it up so do some demo work on the wood something you got to cut the nails off 
or whatever, etc. Usually that's what you use it for. But when you're cutting, doing production, this still sounds good, powered. You know, if, if you have a, like I said, a battery pack, it's good, good to have. Now they're making the big ones. I think it's Makita and Dewalt. And you put your batteries on it. But remember, this is a good skill saw right here. A rotor hammer, you know, it's good to have. You have it, you need it, you use it typically in a framing job. You might not use it every day. Depends on the job you're doing. But it's, eventually you're gonna need it. A whole hog too, you might not use it every day. But there will be those days you use it you know, to drill the holes you need for the nailers, when you're setting down plates, drilling those holes, countersinking. Same for this drill, depends what you're doing. Depends what you're doing. This is a good drill, it's not that heavy. A pass loader for hardware. Um, like I said, anybody can use this. A journeyman uses it too sometimes. But technically, it's good to have, you know, if you're doing your own work, you never know. Your, uh, your foreman might tell you, hey, put some hardware. But usually apprentices are the ones that have, are doing all the, the, the hardware. But hey, anybody can use this. It's a good tool, good investment. I prefer this one, pass load, positive placement. A Hitachi nail gun, main tool for a rough framer right here. Dangerous, always keep, you know, a distance from a nail because uh, it'll get you. Sometimes they fly off, sometimes it goes through, the kicks back, you hit a knot. The impact, like I said, when you're doing all those hold downs, all those anchors. So yeah, you know, I hope you guys liked it. Give me some comments, drop some comments, you know, take care, God bless, you know, God bless, it's a beautiful day. Like I said, I went through my videos today, which one has more views, and I saw that my two bag 101 had it, and then, it's time to do another carpenter one. Drop some uh, likes, some comments. Let me know what you think, any questions. Like I said, uh, I hope you guys like it. I got more tools that you gotta use. Layout tools, uh, measuring tools, etc. cetera. Uh, lasers, I got all those tools, you know. Drop some views, some likes, some comments. And for sure, once I see it's coming up, I'm gonna do another video of all those little well, extra tools that, that I got going on that you need to complete a carpenter job. Um, but for now, I might be missing a couple tools. I know there's planers. That's what I don't have, a planer. I didn't bring it down. Uh, sometimes you use a... Uh, there's different tools, you know. It depends what you're doing. But basically, for a commercial rough framing or residential rough framing, this is what you use, you know. So another video, like I said, we could talk about levels, lasers, layout, squares, torpedoes, everything. There's more to it. It's not just, this is the power tools, but there's more to it. I hope you guys like it. Drop some comments, like, subscribe. Peace, you know. God bless. Take care. For all my carpinteros out there and everybody in the industry. Síganle chingando. No se rajen. Peace.